preface of never a handbook for the uninitiated and inexperienced aspirants to refined society's giddy heights and glittering attainments this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. recording by david wales never a handbook for the uninitiated and inexperienced aspirants to refine society's giddy heights and glittering attainments by nathan dane erner preface or prelude this little book is cordially recommended to all parties just hesitating on the plush padded gilt-edged threshold of our highest social circles in purely business affairs it may not be as useful as hoyle's games or lock on the human understanding but a careful study of its contents cannot but prove the open sesame to that jealously guarded realm good society in which you aspire to circulate freely and shine with becoming lustre it is easier for a needle to pass through a camel's eye says poor richard or someone else than for a poor young man to enter the mansions of the rich and i the author of this code of warnings as truly say unto you that a contemptuous disregard of the same will be likely to lead you into mortification and embarrassment if not into being incontinently kicked out of doors while intended chiefly for the young not the less may the old the decrepit and the infirm likewise rejoice in the possession of the rules and prohibitions herein contained and hasten to commit them to memory but the memory is treacherous it would therefore be well for such persons to carry the handbook constantly with them to be referred to on short notice wherever they may chance to be in the street car in the drawing-room on the promenade on the ballroom floor at table while visiting and so on in this way the handbook will be like the magic ring that pricked the wearer's finger warningly whenever about to yield to an unworthy impulse its instructively reiterated never will become indeed a blessing not in disguise but rather in guardian angel's habiliments it will be in truth a bosom companion in the happiest sense of the term a mutely eloquent monitor of deportment a still small voice as to what is in good form and what is not end of a preface or prelude Chapter One of Never by Nathan Dane Erner. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter One Making and Receiving Calls. Never, however formal your visit, neglect to wipe your feet on the doormat in lieu of the hall or stair carpet. A private hallway is not a stable entrance never bound into the drawing-room unannounced with your hat overcoat and overshoes on nor with your umbrella in your hand especially if it has been raining hard never particularly if a comparative stranger hail your host as old cock nor grab your hostess's jewelled hand whether offered to you or not as if it were a rope's end and you in danger of drowning neither if other guests are present with whom you have no acquaintance prance around amongst them poking them in the ribs slapping them on the back etc true breeding is not synonymous with monkey capers and barroom manners never be icy or contemptuous but never on the other hand be fiery or too familiar emulate neither the iceberg nor the volcano there is a happy medium that can be cultivated to advantage never loll at full length on the sofa or bestride a chair with your elbows resting on the back and the soles of your boots plainly visible to your vis-a-vis -vis. sofas are not beds nor are chairs vaulting horses never even when sitting in your chair tilt it far back with your heels resting on the mantelpiece and your back to the rest of the company present are you a gentleman or an orangutan 
never either keep twisting and squirming about in your chair as if sitting on a hornet's nest nor keep crossing and recrossing the legs every second and a half nor carve your initials in the furniture with your penknife st vitus dance is one thing dignified repose another never in being introduced to a lady make a pun on her name if it is a homely one or jokingly allude to rouge pots and whited sepulchres if she is no longer young with an air of having resorted to preservative aids illogical but intuitive the feminine mind is swift to imagine and resent an innuendo where perhaps none was intended never if the lady be young but homely at once patronizingly remark that after all handsome is as handsome does and you have even known the dowdiest and most unattractive girls make good matches through tact and perseverance however laudable your intention there may be a muscular brother inconveniently in the background never attempt to sing or play even though pressed to do so if you are absolutely ignorant of both vocal and instrumental music effects might indeed be produced but would they be desirable never be so self-conscious as to fancy yourself a cave bear and other people but field mice true politeness will betray no hoggishness as an ancient writer has sagely observed never especially with your superiors buttonhole people or shake your fist in their faces or pound them in the ribs when you have occasion to address them this is more appropriate to a horse auction than a drawing-room and is in violation of good form never lean across one person with your hand on his knees and your back hair in his face to talk to another never bawl out at the top of your lungs or try to monopolize all the talk you are neither in the stock exchange nor a cattle yard never if bald and warm mop and rub up your head ears and neck with your handkerchief a reception or drawing-room is not a barber shop never intrude your maladies upon the general conversation people cannot be so much interested in your bunions or back aches as you are never violently abuse people who may overhear you nor be bitingly witty at another's expense never interrupt the general conversation by reading long-winded newspaper reports aloud never contemptuously criticize the furniture the pictures or the wallpaper as being cheap and mean this is but a scurvy return for the hospitality you are enjoying never chew tobacco or smoke a pipe at receptions if you must do the one or the other be sure to use the cuspidor but it is safer to let up on tobacco until out of doors or in your own room never calumniate people or give a false coloring to your statements in other words don't lie any more than you can help be diplomatic never above all fail intact for instance don't say that the room is as cold as a barn even if you think so tact and fact may not always go hand in hand never interrupt or contradict overbearingly or with a sort of snort either of these faults is directly opposed to the canons of good society never be explosive or pugnacious accompanying your side of an argument with roaring explosives and furious gesticulations a lady's parlor is not a bear garden never on the other hand be cowering and snivelling as though desirous of some one to kick you as a boon in deportment the demeanor of the rabbit is no more to be emulated than that of the famished wolf never in the midst of a discussion upon solemn topics retail antediluvian jokes and then ha ha boisterously at them when no one else can see anything to laugh at in fine don't be an unmitigated bore never gape yawn heigh-ho or stamp your feet disapprovingly when others are talking this is blighting if not fairly irritating never be unduly stuck up because you are yourself is no reason why you are william h vanderbilt or george francis train 
never sulk and growl under your breath like a bear with a sore head because you fancy yourself neglected brighten up and even snicker rather than adopt this gloomy course moroseness is dispiriting never even murder a persistent boar until you get outside to send for the police might cause an inconvenience never if playing cards with ladies spit on your hands when dealing or mark the bowers and aces with pencil marks or knife punctures englishmen would be especially horrified at such a proceeding never rave tear your hair or swear there has been cheating all around even if you have lost ten cents on the game either bear your losses with equanimity or never gamble never treat aged and venerable persons like budding hoodlums or make riotous fun of their wrinkles or their bald heads you may be old yourself some time if not assassinated for your bad manners never neglect to give precedence to ladies both on entering and quitting a room a brutal disregard of this injunction might cause you to be led out by the ear never as hostess insist that a casual caller shall send for his trunk and stay a week or two never as host ask him hilariously if he is well over his last drunk and getting primed for another this is not in good taste never hurry your departure as if your legs were sticks and your body a skyrocket never on the other hand tarry from say four in the afternoon till three in the morning a light flying visit is one thing taking root another End of chapter 1chapter two of never by nathan dane erner this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter two at breakfast never descend to the breakfast room without having washed your face and brushed your hair cleanliness is a part of good breeding never appear at breakfast even in sultry weather without your coat waistcoat collar and necktie are you a gentleman or a hottentot never even in winter take your seat at the table in your top boots with your overcoat buttoned to the chin and with a sealskin cap drawn down to your eyebrows but if you are breakfasting in franz joseph's land this warning may be disregarded never fail to help the ladies first before gorging every edible in sight you will thus cultivate a reputation for self-abnegation that may stand you in good stead never if a guest inspect the butter suspiciously smelling and tasting it and then say mm, pretty good butter what there is of it never having perceived your blunder hasten to rectify it by calling out ay and plenty of it too such as it is ha 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 better abstain from criticism altogether since nothing is costing you anything never insist on starting this meal with soup cazuela or breakfast soup is a spanish-american custom that has not yet been imported never before expressing your preference for tea or coffee ask your hostess which she would recommend as the least poisonous she might not consider the insinuation as complimentary to herself never dispose of eggs by biting off the small end throwing the head far back and noisily sucking them out of the shells a spoon or even a fork is preferable besides you might encounter a bad one when too late never wipe your nose on your napkin or use it in dusting off your boots on rising napkins have their legitimate uses handkerchiefs theirs never on finishing with your napkin fastidiously fold it away in its ring nor carelessly hang it on the chandelier use judgment in little things never cool your tea or coffee by pouring it back and forth from cup to saucer and from saucer to cup in a high arching torrent after the manner of a diamond fastened bartender with a cocktail or julep there is a time and place for everything never suck your knife contemplatively and then dive it in the butter dish this is wholly indefensible 
never use the butter knife in besmearing and plastering your bread with butter an inch thick better tear up the bread in small chunks and sop up the butter with it never cut meat with your teaspoon sip tea from a fork or painfully suggest sword swallowing by eating with your knife try to appear civilized never convey the impression that you are shoveling food down an excavation rather than eating it cultivated people eat barbarians engulf never smack the lips and roll the eyes while masticating accompanying the operation with such expressions as oh golly but that's good aha that touches the spot give your neighbors a show never reach far over the table with both hands for a coveted morsel ask for it call a servant or circulate around the table behind the other breakfasters chairs never shake your fist at the waiters or swear at them in loud and imperious tones this is not the best form even in a restaurant never pounce on a particular morsel intended for an invalid like a hawk on a june bug first say to yourself reflectively am i in a private breakfast room or a barn never try to dispose of beefsteak peach jam and coffee at the same mouthful failure complete and ignominious will be the result never if at a tenth-rate boarding-house insist upon having broiled game in the bright lexicon of the boarding-house there's no such word as quail never unless you are john l sullivan indicate your irritation by upsetting the table or shying muffins at the landlord equability of temper and a good appetite should go hand in hand never fail in urbanity with those around you loud squabbling fighting with the feet under the table and open rivalry for the smiles of a pretty waitress are altogether alien to the higher culture never make a pretense on quitting the table of mistaking the napkin for your handkerchief this is an old old dodge never stretch yourself gulch gape and yawp on rising you should have finished all that in bed never refer to the meal you have disposed of under the generic name of hash the commonness of this fault does not excuse it never fail in bowing gracefully when abandoning the table and in lighting your cigar never strike a match on your hostess's back be keenly observant of your well-bred neighbors and you will at last learn to avoid these little breaches of etiquette that are so painstakingly enumerated for your cultivation End of chapter two chapter three of never by nathan dane erner this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter three at luncheon never become notorious at that most unfortunate and reprehensible of mortals the lunch fiend if at a pseudo free lunch drink something at the bar first if only a glass of water never gorge at a luncheon as if there were never to be a dinner hour a gentleman is never supposed to be ravenous never indiscriminately mix your liquors at this hour a little whiskey or brandy as an appetizer with not more than four varieties of wine while eating and topping off with a few mugs of beer should be quite satisfying never if at a fashionable collation discuss business politics or abstruse scientific problems with the fair creatures present sink the shop if only for ten minutes never jocosely give wrong names to well-known dishes before you to denominate breaded cutlets fried horse cold corned beef mule meat and sliced tongue larded elephant's ears may be humorous but hardly in keeping with the light festivities of the occasion never if ignorant of certain dishes attempt to denominate them at all if found palatable eat and ask no questions never fail to let a lady sip out of your glass if she entreats you to that effect 
you can secretly throw away the contents afterwards but a direct insult was not embodied in the request never refuse to hold a lady's saucer of ice cream for her and feed her with a spoon at her earnest request this betrays a guileless trust in you that should be esteemed as complimentary never be detected in surreptitiously stuffing your pockets with raisins fruit cake and peanuts it will not be so much the theft as the detection that will cause the honest blush to mantle in your virile cheek never attract a lady's attention by playfully signaling her across the table with melon rinds or banana peel to trundle a napkin ring straight over into her lap were in better taste never regale the company with detailed descriptions of similar repasts that you have enjoyed in pekin but where puppy dog roasts rat pie and shark's fins were the most appetizing features though roars of laughter reward your recital you are not now in the antipodes never give in in a contest over a favorite turkey bone with a spoiled child of the family even if his howls shatter the frescoes never forget that you are his senior hence his superior never feed your hostess's favorite cat or lap-dog at the lunch-table by setting the pretty creature on your shoulder and tossing up scraps to him between your own mouthfuls this may be artless but is not in the best taste never neglect to quit the table after all the other guests have retired to continue gorging and guzzling in solitary state is to make a show of yourself to the menials never fail when you have at last fully decided to give the repast a rest to quit the room easily though with a dignified air to dance away with a hop skip and a jump while trolling out a careless careless tavern catch or with painful grimaces while convulsively clutching the pit of the stomach with both hands is to hint a reflection upon the hospitality you have enjoyed this might subject you to unflattering comment end of chapter three chapter four of never by nathan dane erner this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter four at dinner never forget that this is the repast par excellence never as an invited guest be more than two hours late your host and hostess as well as the other guests may have starved themselves for a fortnight for this particular gorge never in handing in a lady struggle desperately to pass through the dining-room doorway to a breast if said aperture admits but one at a time sideways even if it break your proud heart give the lady precedence always never sit six feet off from the table nor yet so crunched up against it as to cause you indescribable torture well within feeding distance with ample elbow room for knife and fork play is your safest rule never tuck your napkin all around under your collar band nor make a child's bib of it you are not in a barber's chair nor at a baby farm never suck up your soup with a straw nor with your elbows on the table and the plate rim at your lips drink it down with happy gurgles and impetuous haste go for it with a spoon for all you are worth never ask for more than a fourth service of soup never bury your nose in your plate while using your knife fork and spoon at the same time after the manner of chinese chopsticks maintain as erect an attitude as you can without endangering your spinal column though not as if you had swallowed a poker never exhibit surprise or irritation should you overturn your soup in your lap rise majestically and while the waiter is wiping it off calmly declare that you were born under a lucky star since not a drop has spattered your clothes never snap off your bread in enormous chunks to be filtered and washed down by gravy or wine rather than this crumb it off into pellets to be skillfully tossed into the mouth as occasion may demand 
never ram your knife more than halfway down your throat hack with your knife claw up with your fork that is what they're made for never take up a great meat slice on your fork and then leisurely nibble around the corners making steady inroads till your teeth strike silver this is a method rigidly interdicted among the highest circles never eat fish with a spoon if the silver butter knife can be appropriated for that purpose never eat as if you had bet high on getting away with the entire banquet in six minutes and a half this may be complimentary to the viands but is somewhat vulgar never when the champagne begins to circulate snatch the bottle from the waiter's hand hang on to the nozzle tilt up the butt and ingurgitate for dear life while approvingly patting your stomach with your disengaged hand this is little short of an enormity never devour spinach with a mustard spoon spear beans with a wooden toothpick or mistake the gravy for another course of soup take your cue from such of your neighbors as appear least like hogs never clean up and polish off your plate as if it were a magnifying lens before sending it for a second installment there are scullions in the kitchen or ought to be never spit back rejected morsels on your plate nor toss fruit stones under the table nor hide fish bones under the ornamental centerpieces an obdurate piece of gristle should be bolted at all hazards fruit stones may be dexterously transferred to your neighbor's plate and fish bones may be cleverly utilized as a garniture for the salt cellars and butter plates never hurry matters when fully half gorged when there is a ringing in your ears and things begin to swim before your eyes these are warnings to taper off slowly in preparation for dessert never adhere wholly to champagne throughout the repast a few glasses of claret as between drinks with now and then a quencher of brown sherry afford an agreeable variety never forget to occasionally look after the lady under your care she may moreover be useful in passing you dishes during the temporary vanishings of the servant never attempt a flirtation or even a sustained conversation during the repast gastronomy is a noble but jealous mistress who permits no division of your allegiance never when dessert is served wade into the jellies and riot amid the tarts and cakes as if you were just getting up your wind for a fresh onslaught be moderate never ask for a soup plate of ice cream it is better form to have your saucer replenished again and again never talk when your mouth is fairly crammed nor in a smothered wheezy tone of voice it is more dignified to bow blandly point to your mouth in explanation of your predicament and wag your head never be so preoccupied with drinking as not to be on the lookout for the lady under your care she has a right to her share of the liquids never be embarrassed retain your self-possession if you are choking never forget your own wants under any circumstances remember that self-respect is as much of a virtue as respect for others never be self-conscious guzzle quietly and let others take care of themselves never on the other hand push self-depreciation to the wall never lose sight of the fact that while you are a gentleman you are also an american sovereign feasting at some one else's expense all sovereigns do that never if called upon for a toast be afraid to pledge yourself if you don't blow your own trumpet who will blow it for you never use your fork for a toothpick nor the edge of the tablecloth for a napkin summon a servant and make known your wants in imperious stentorian tones never lounge back in your chair and request the waiter to pour wine down your throat if too unsteady to longer hold a glass this is apt to be noticeable never rest both elbows on the table while shuffling your feet nervously underneath it and trying to steer one more glass to your lips if paralysis threatens request to be let out 
never lose your temper when a man has well dined says an old playwright he should feel in a good humour with all the world never fail to rise when the ladies are leaving the table and to remain standing somehow no matter how unsteadily until the last petticoat has disappeared then your duty having been performed you can roll under the table if you want to or seesaw back to your anchorage and see if you can hold any more wine never drink too much wine true there are a variety of opinions as to how much is too much but be prudent be resolved never make an exhibition of yourself at least try to knock off before being paralyzed and be happy never however yield to the jocular propensities of your brother guests should they prop you in a corner of the room with your hair drawn over your eyes and a lamplighter in your mouth for a cigar and then jocosely vociferate speech speech heroically reach for the nearest bottle back with your head and guzzle away a philosopher a real gentleman will never be laughed down sneered under or rubbed out never if called on for a speech in a complimentary way however make a rostrum of the table at which you have dined rather assay your own chair the window-sill or even the mantelpiece never fail in courtesy even when grossly intoxicated apologize even if you have slumbered on your neighbor's shoulder and murmur your excuses even while disappearing under the table an exponent of high breeding never forgets to be a gentleman under the most adverse circumstances never whistle sing ditties or jeer irrelevantly while another guest is responding to a popular toast you surely should not wish to monopolize the entire oratorical effects of the occasion and moreover boorish interruption is always in equivocable form end of chapter four chapter five of never by nathan dane erner this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter five while walking never fail to maintain a firm but easy attitude the willow not the lightning rod will afford you the best suggestions never walk over people but around them men and women are not stepping stones or doormats save to monarchs and rich corporations never neglect to apologize if you stamp on a man's corns or jostle him into an excavation never howl with laughter at any peculiarity of aspect manner or dress be a gentleman always never crush and shoulder your way through groups of ladies at shop windows with your cane menacingly twirled aloft shillelagh fashion analogy between a fashionable promenade and donnybrook fair is wholly apocryphal never smoke in the street unless you can afford a good article chinese cigarettes long nines and black cutty pipes are decidedly in bad form never if you must smoke whiffle your smoke in other faces or playfully burn them in the back of the neck or ask a lady for a light walter raleigh the father of tobacco using even carried his own cuspidor never munch nuts or gorge fruits in public a lady or gentleman on the afternoon promenade with a peeled pineapple in one hand a huge slice of watermelon in the other and the jaws industriously working is not an edifying spectacle never forget if with a lady that she is under your protection not you under hers never rush her past an oyster saloon at a run or wildly distract her attention from a confectioner's window as a woman she has her privileges never drag her pell-mell with you through a mob of fighting roughs never forget to be kind even while feigning deafness to all insinuations as to refreshment kindness is a instinct says josh billings while politeness is only an art never neglect to give her at least a portion of your umbrella when escorting her through the rain 
if it should rain cats and dogs as the saying goes an adjournment beneath an awning or front stoop might be deemed advisable never if walking with a tramp introduce him to every acquaintance you chance to meet it is a free country but the line must be drawn somewhere never if you have occasion to address a strange lady scrape cringe and wriggle before her in an agony of politeness to raise your hat gravely place your hand on your heart and yield her a low sweeping obeisance with your shoulders shrugged considerably higher than your ears is sufficient you are not supposed to be a korean ambassador in the presence of j gould never address questions to strangers indiscriminately especially as to their secret and private affairs communicativeness is not a necessary outcome of a total lack of sodality never even in questioning a policeman fan him with his own club note down his number and ask him if he has yet got the hair off his teeth though in livery he may yet be above the brute creation never ask questions at all but consult this handbook never if suddenly confronted on the promenade by a hostile acquaintance accept his proposition to fight him in the gutter for a pot of beer you are not a prize-fighter never forget to pick up a lady's handkerchief if she lets it fall by accident not with effusive familiarity but daintily on the end of your cane or umbrella common civility is one of the cardinal points of good breeding never pick it up at all if she drops it purposely you needn't set your foot on it or scowl at her but coquetry is one of the vices deserving of silent reproof never pick up anything that even your companion may drop unless he should be very drunk you may pick him up also if he should drop never even if in haste rush through a crowded thoroughfare at a breakneck gate with your hair flying your necktie over your ears and shouting clear the track at every jump hire a cab or obtain roller skates repose of manner should never be sacrificed to emotional insanity never pose on street corners attitudinize before showcase mirrors or whistle an opera bouffe air while watching a funeral cortege never if with a lady ask her to wait for you on the curb while you step into an adjacent bar-room to see a man the ruse is a transparent one and moreover she may be thirsty herself never hilariously address a stranger with an obvious defect of vision as squinty nor ask another how many barrels of whisky it has taken to paint his nose such familiarities may possibly be resented never on the other hand be so over civil as to be mistaken for a dancing master or a bunco steerer never forget that a gentleman is a gentleman everywhere even mcgilder was occasionally taken for one never have your shoes polished in the middle of the sidewalk while hanging on to an awning beam for support it may create the impression that all the polish you have is upon your shoes end of chapter five Chapter Six of Never by Nathan Dane Erner. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Six in the Use of Language. Never cease trying to make yourself understood. Learn to read and write before you are of age. Never pronounce with your teeth clenched through the nose or by ripping up the sounds laboriously from the pit of the stomach. Speak gently but with clarion like distinctness never squeal like a rat grunt like a pig or roar like a bull cultivate a pleasing voice never smother your meaning out of sight with slang soup should be seasoned not red hot says an old writer never swear anathematize or fairly drip with profanity especially in the presence of delicate ladies and small children undue emphasis often defeats itself never indicate a mere passing surprise by such expressions as holy smoke gosh almighty i'm teetotally dashed and the like 
a mere lifting of the eyebrows a convulsive gasp or a wild staggered look while smiting the forehead with the fist will be demonstrative enough never say sir to a boot-black and old chap to a minister of the gospel in the same breath exercise tact never say no mum or yes um in addressing a lady or not much old hoss or yes sir in speaking to a gentleman even if these chance to be your parents or near relatives no dad yes mommy no granny yes nunksky and so on are more affectionate never address a young lady as jen moll paul bet suki or by any other abbreviation of her given name miss so-and-so or plain miss is in better form never address a young married lady as old girl even if you were intimate with her before her marriage her husband may not apprehend your facetiousness never mispronounce never say protect for protect your for you tater for potato this ear for this here tommy toes for tomatoes violent for violent abergoin for aborigine or busted for bursted take her up tenderly lift her with care never say kin for can theys for their feller for fellow gal for girl was for was war for where thar for there har for hair ev for have wool for will could for could nor wood for wood never imagine that ignoramuses only fall into these errors the greatest scholars in the world have been known to fairly revel in them when suffering from delirium tremens or otherwise off their guard never forget that duty rhymes with beauty not with booty and that morn doesn't rhyme with dawn at all poetasters to the contrary notwithstanding even a gentleman of the world will not wholly despise the soft demands of rhythm never say idea for idea nor warm for warm the addition of r in the one case is as indefensible as its omission in the other never say pants for trousers vest for waistcoat boiled rag for shirt nor trotter cases for boots and shoes as a sole alternative let your language be choice to fastidiousness never allude to a cuss meaning a man even pure cussedness for sheer contrariety is becoming the property of the common herd never say the old woman alluding to your wife is marriage of necessity the grave of respect never speak of your father as the governor the old man the money-bag and the like perhaps he is a very good sort of person never say castor for hat nor gunboats for overshoes nor duds for clothes in general a multiplication of these synonyms may be creditable to the invention but is apt to be confusing never fear to say you are sick if you are so englishmen are ill and frenchmen are at liberty to be an disposé we never say an ill room or an indisposed bed but a sick room or a sick bed as the case may be never ask if the railroad has come in but if the train has come in the track can no more come and go than can the station itself never pile on the adjectives a painting may be meritorious without being stunning a handsome wallpaper is not necessarily excruciating and you should hardly call a choice dish of ham and eggs divine let not your enthusiasm overleap itself never say gnaw nixy not by a blamed sight nor nary a time for pure and simple no let the negative be swift clear and decisive even in declining a drink never say yis yaw nor va yas for yes unless you swear by the shamrock the bologna sausage or the roast beef of old england 
never say that you believe you'll take root or come to anchor when you intend sitting down nor say squatty boo to a friend in requesting him to take a seat never if you must use slang fail to make a judicious choice of it who was it said let me but make the slang of a people and he who will make their laws but no matter since there is plenty of it ready-made never attempt to add thereto but be content to separate the wheat from the chaff the fine gold from the dross never speak of a bar-room as a history a whisky ranch a rum-hole or a jig-water dispensary plain old anglo-saxon gin-mill must hold its own against the innovations of storming time never in speaking confidentially to a young lady of her father's tippling habits refer to him as an old soaker a rumhead, a guzzler a perambulating beer-keg or a happy-go-lucky old swill-tub far better to slur matters gently by recommending an inebriate asylum or suggesting that the old gentleman be locked up with a whisky-barrel with a fair chance of his drinking himself to death never at social gatherings speak of elderly ladies as old hens nor of the children of the house as kids but a careful study of the very best society will soon make these pitfalls apparent to you never in entreating a young lady to sing ask her if she can't chirp or twitter a bit never after she has sung and with obvious effort playfully suggest that she has a bellows to mend to gaze into her eyes lingeringly and whisper that you did not mean to knock her endwise would be more considerate and soothing never say smeller horn bugle or snoot for nose never say peepers for eyes potato trap for mouth nor bread basket for stomach at least not in the very highest circles all factor optics and paunch are a choice disguise for the queen's english if that is the end in view never say that a man was howling mad or jumping crazy meaning that he was very angry when you have such tempting morsels as hopping mad frothing at the mouth mad as a hatter and crazy as a bed-bug at your disposal never say well i should smile meaning that you assent to something said or proposed when honest old you can bet your boots i will is coyly nestling near at hand craving a caress never ask how in blank am i going to do it when the silvery do it yourself and be blowed may lend a mingled suavity and conciseness to the situation never say busted in the snood for thumped in the proboscis this is wholly inexcusable never say i seed for i saw i heard for i heard or i thunk for i thought notwithstanding that these gross mistakes may be in vogue among highly educated men newspaper editors and professional linguists erect a standard of your own rather than follow in their unworthy lead never say him and me is going to the circus when he and i are going to the circus is meant this scarcely perceptible inaccuracy brings many a conscientious student to grief never say they as well but i are not painstaking discernment will enable you to make the correction never say between you and i and the pump handle meaning between you and me never speak of dinner as grub hash or trough time nor refer to the dessert as an after-clap never if you have been on a spree allude to it as a boost a toot a twist a rolling big drunk a bust or a bump when strong sensible budge bender and jamboree are peeping wistfully from the catalogue never proclaim that you are chocked to the throat meaning simply that you have dined plentifully never be afraid to call a spade a spade even if you have bet on hearts or diamonds never if intoxicated say that you are weaving the winding way slopping over six sheets to the wind or screwed the latter is wholly british and not yet adopted with us 
never repeat worn-out saws and proverbs such as it's a long turn that makes no lane it's an ill wind that blows your hat off and the like better use your own invention than harp forever on a mouldered string never moreover repeat much used quotations no matter how celebrated they may once have been we have met the enemy and we are theirs and whoever undertakes to shoot down the american flag haul him on the spot may be patriotic but they weary they weary never call a pretender a cad when either fraud or deadbeat can safely give odds to the importation never allude to your timepiece as a cracker a turnip or a ticker nor to your hands as mollies fins or flippers nor to your fingers as digits the use of any one of these slang terms indicates a want of higher culture never in referring to an enemy say that you will put a head on him bigger than a bushel basket merely meaning that you will punch him never say peart for clever never say on common for uncommon nor comment upon a delicacy by saying that it is licking good never say in commenting upon a lady's appearance that she looked like a fright like a frump or like a bundle of bones tied up with rags you have dowdy and scarecrow to fall back on never wish aloud that a man may be hanged drawn and quartered simply because he owes you a dollar and a quarter fiendish resentment is not one of the shining characteristics of a true gentleman never when in doubt as to any particular form of expression fail to consult this handbook it is the one faithful lamp by which your steps may be guided End of chapter 6Chapter 7 of Never by Nathan Dane Erner. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 7 Dress and Personal Habits. Never forget to wash yourself and brush your hair, if you have any, before quitting your room in the morning. To make your toilet at the kitchen sink or even at a convenient fire plug is to set the canons of good society at naught never reappear in the morning with a dirty shirt a crushed hat and with your necktie under your ear this might convey the impression that you had gone to bed in your clothes never be filthy in anything cleanliness is a virtue that even a recognized gentleman cannot afford to hold in contempt never appear in other than subdued colors for the most part give me plain red and yellow said the negro minister in his advice to his flock on the vanities of dress never wear anything over dainty never of course we are now addressing the male reader for whom this invaluable handbook is chiefly designed wear anything that the gentler sex have made exclusively their own to appear in public with a nosegay in lieu of a throat stud or even with a sunflower at the waist would be likely to excite remark never wear check shirts children's dickies nor longshoremen's jumpers an immaculate shirt front with a clean collar to match is always en règle never wear full evening dress in the early morning especially if you intend working in the garden or whitewashing the back fence before going downtown never wear dancing pumps in rainy or snowy weather or arctics if it is warm and fine but long continued observation will finally enable you to discriminate for yourself in these minor matters never appear among ladies with your boots covered with mud and your whole person suggestive of having been rolled in the gutter if you haven't a servant or wife to clean you up undertake the task yourself however distasteful never wear your hat tilted far over your nose with a cigar meeting its brim at a rising angle of forty five degrees from your lips the volunteer fire department though once the arbiter of manly deportment is a thing of the past 
never wear pinchbeck jewelry loud breast pins nor steel silver or washed gold watch guards secret society regalia conspicuously worn and multitudinous finger rings are also in questionable taste never walk with a high and mighty stud horse gait nor yet slouch and slink along as if you had robbed a hen roost nor yet with a bounding hoopla sort of prance like a clown in the circus ring never either walk bow-legged or club-footed if you can help it cultivate a grand regal easy and flowing carriage but without swagger or bombast never walk especially if in haste with your arms folded nor with your hands in your coat-tail pockets never improvise toothpicks out of fence splints and then chew them industriously in public tobacco and chewing gum still assert their claims never expectorate all around you at every step you take without an instant's intermission if you are troubled with bronchitis remain at home if the same old drunk persistently lingers try a b and s or a gin fizz according to your judgment never whistle like a locomotive nor attempt a tyrolese yodel while walking with a lady or ladies on a fashionable promenade never whittle sticks play at a jew's harp or essay to catch flies on window panes in public such recreations innocent in themselves should only be pursued in the privacy of one's own apartment never permit the quality or cut of your wearing apparel to deteriorate if you have to live on pork and beans to keep up your end in this regard never retrench in your wardrobe expenses whatever you do said old samuel pepys all the world knows how you appear but no one need know how you live a frequent change of residence might serve to disconcert the tailors should they prove troublesome never allow your shoes to run down at the heel nor out at the toes nothing is more incongruous than a fine gentleman in other respects quite the swell with his foot leather burst out around the instep his stocking heels wobbling up and down at every jump and his bare toes courting the public gaze never hiccup or sneeze without intermission unless greatly inebriated in this dilemma lose no time in drinking yourself sober or in seeking temporary retirement if only on a park bench never let your lower lip hang down on your breast like a motherless calf's put up or shut up says the coptic proverb never on the other hand screw up your lips under your nose as though constantly subjected to an overpowering odour even a prevailing ecstatic adder of roses haunted expression is in preferable form to this never fail to keep your nose clean if you have no handkerchief use your coat-tail never cultivate a broad teeth-husking smile unless your ivories are in good order tobacco-stained fangs are at an especial disadvantage in this form never fail to cleanse the teeth at least once a week a toothbrush is best never wear your hat in church in a boudoir nor at a marriage or burial service never on the other hand take it off when overtaken by a blizzard or a cyclone if neither the blizzard nor the cyclone does that much for you you may consider yourself fortunate never doff your hat nor make your bow indiscriminately a cyrus field for instance would be justified in expecting greater courtesy than would be accorded to a jesse james though if cornered by one of the latter type on his own stamping ground it would doubtless be well not to slight him too conspicuously be diplomatic never fail to cultivate an off-hand judgment of men and women who are strangers to you a man with a head like a monkey's is not necessarily a savant nor are putty-like faces with idiotic lips and china-blue eyes in women necessarily elizabeth cady stantonesque in intellectual scope and oratorical brilliancy you would scarcely mistake red leary for herbert spencer never carry a lighted cigar into a military store or powder magazine 
never be over servile to good clothes for themselves alone the professional thief who lost his life in a double tragedy in sixth avenue not long ago was one of the best-dressed men in new york never on the other hand venture to indiscriminately despise slovenly dress in men or women lady burdett kutz is said to occasionally slouch around london like a charwoman just for the fun of the thing good old steve gerard was wont to dress like a music master in distress and some greasy old garlic-smelling tatterdemalion at your elmo may be one of the most successful pawnbrokers of the hebraic persuasion never burst without notice into any one's private apartment like a shot out of a gun even your excuse that you want to borrow your car fare may not be mollifying and people have nerves never keep gnawing your moustache twisting your whiskers into fantastic braids nor making your hat wag about on your head through muscular contraction of the scalp never crackle your knuckles with sharp reports grit your teeth heave deep wheezing sighs nor keep running your fingers through your hair till it stands up like a brush heap if you imagine one or all of these feats to be uniquely interesting hire out to a dime museum never take any more drinks in the early part of the day than are absolutely necessary to brace you up three cocktails as eye-openers followed by two in the way of appetizers ought to straighten you up before breakfast and if not already a slave to tippling a dozen beers or so ought to satisfy you between then and noon if tempted to overdo the matter recall the wax group of the drunkard's family in barnum's old museum set the teeth hard and shut down shut down never forget to say your prayers before going to sleep if it is in accordance with your religious convictions never fail to have convictions of some sort a man without any is like a cat shelling walnuts would you be a non-entity a dolt a jackass or a gentleman of distinction a man of parts a power in the land end of chapter seven chapter eight of never by nathan dane erner this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter eight at public entertainments never if escorting one lady or several scuffle and bandy oaths with ticket speculators at a theatre entrance cultivate an easy hauteur of manner never under like environments offer to bounce the attendant policeman boots blue coat and buttons if he will only drop his club your ladies may object even if the policeman does not never upon entering seize an usher by the throat rub your coupons into his eyes and loudly demand your seats or his life a public entertainment is not a rat baiting never retain your hat and take off your coat and waistcoat at theatre or opera to shed the tile and retain the garments is in better form never whistle guffaw or make boisterous comments during the rendition of pathetic scenes consistency's a jewel never testify your approbation by prolonged roars cries of hear hear tossing your hat in the air and making quartz crushers of your feet moderate your transports never express your disapproval by furious catcalls by pelting the performance with stale eggs or by vociferated injunctions to choke em off or burn the crib or to run down the rag a pronounced sibilation accompanied by judicious barkings will answer quite as well never even if slowly murdered by the orchestra betray your sufferings by idiotic grimaces violent contortions and dismal groans remember talleyrand who could have smiled his unconsciousness even if stabbed in the back never jocosely shout out fire if a red-haired lady should rustle into a seat in front of you incendiarism is the legitimate mission of stump orators and firebugs 
never bring your opera glass to bear like a siege gun with your lips spread open as over a barmecide's free lunch even a harsh gritting of the teeth during the operation is not in the best taste never hold it for a lady to look through while adjusting her line of vision by the back of her head and advising her in a hoarse whisper as to the best method for gunning her object are you at the opera or the race course never loudly discuss politics divorce suits or ministerial scandals at the theatre or at a concert when the performance is going on if speech is silver and silence golden discussion at such times is metallic to annoyance never if compelled to quit the building before the entertainment is finished pass up the aisle on all fours to avoid an interruption siamese obsequiousness is out of place in well-bred audiences never at the close hump your way boorishly through the well-dressed throngs or expedite an exit by flying leaps over the backs of the seats even a break over the stage would be preferable to this form never after a brief adjournment to the open air apologize to the lady under your escort with a profuseness that will render the clothes burned coffee or smoked herring too apparent on your breath better confess at once to a gin sour and be done with it frankness and rankness rhyme but in materiality where truth is at stake never send flowers to the stage in a market basket or bombard a diva with bouquets bigger than a cooking stove the language of flowers should appeal to the inner sense never enter a crowded auditorium with your thumbs in the armholes of your waistcoat head thrown back chin in air and the stub of a cigar between the teeth self-consciousness may be pushed to an extreme never lunch between acts in full view of audience on cheap sandwiches peanuts and ginger beer even if you have missed your supper secretly tighten your waistband and think of baron trenck and his fortitude in prison never blow your nose with a loud trumpeting during an especially interesting scene or while a difficult aria is being sung a fanfare is not necessarily in sympathy with a tremulo never if with a lady individualize the features of a ballet a grinning reticence in this regard is more delicate never attempt to join in with the chorus even at a negro minstrel show even burnt cork has its privileges never permit a lady to pay for the tickets at the box office if you haven't any money don't go never on seeing a lady home hint that ice cream and oyster saloons are dangerous places at night the common resorts of tramps thieves prize-fighters and penniless adventurers veracity is one of the characteristics of high breeding never if her residence is closed for the night leave her on the stoop while you go for a policeman to batter at the door ring the bell and wait never say in wishing her good night that she has cost you a pot of money but that her society was something of an equivalent if she really esteems you she will have inferred as much never criticize her conduct during the evening even if it may not have come up to your standard respect her amour propre end of chapter eight End of Never by Nathan Dane Erner